Hey everybody, Juan here, and uh, I've got a bone to pick with some of the other tech journalists that are talking about Windows 8 these days. Now, I can totally understand where if you're a consumer and you're having some problems using Windows 8, Microsoft's newest operating system, I can totally appreciate that because... Microsoft made a lot of changes to how Windows functions. You know, we haven't had a bi as big a change uh, in the Windows world since we moved from DOS to Windows 3.1. But when I hear tech journalists out there saying that Microsoft has made an unworkable operating system or that it needs to be uh, recalled because it's so terrible or maybe they should give us the option to have Windows 7 back, I got a facepalm and I've got a facepalm so hard that I'm probably going to give myself a black eye because it's really not that hard hard to use Windows 8. So I'm doing a little screen sharing here just so that we can uh, go through a couple quick tips. And I'm going to do a series of these videos just so that you guys have a few little fun things to look at so that you can see Windows 8 isn't as scary as the other tech press is making it out to be. So I've already spent way too much time on the traditional desktop. This is my primary argument against those who say we need Windows 7 back because Windows 7 is still here. Yes, we don't have the traditional start button, but honestly, if it's that big a deal to you, go download a third-party one. I'll put a Google link down at the bottom so that you guys can get one. And I find that I spend a lot of time on the traditional desktop when I'm doing things like editing audio or editing video. So if I hit the, uh, if I come down here to the corner, and I hit the start, and I get taken back to our start screen here, this is our start screen. And I'm actually using, I have a touchscreen laptop, but I'm using the mouse cursor on my, or the trackpad on my laptop to do this video, so I'm not cheating or anything. And just as a general walk around, this environment, you scroll through using two fingers on a, on a trackpad, and that gets you back and forth on your start bar. Typically, uh, manufacturers will put in things like a search button or a uh, shortcuts to help you get around on the keyboard, but I'm going to use the the features built into Windows 8 to do this video. So one of the first things that I hear a lot of people talking crap about is how do you close an app when you're in the Metro or the modern UI? And guys, it's really not that hard. So let's say, let's open up our store. So here's our store. And the first criticism that people love to throw up against Windows 8 is, oh, but it's just not conveying any information. There's no, there's no conveyance. It's not conveying anything. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to click on? It actually conveys quite a bit of information. So if you want to go back to start, you go back into the, to the bottom corner. If you want to switch apps, you come up here to this top corner. And if uh, you need your charms bar, and I will agree, the charms bar is a stupid name for shortcuts, but it's a handy little way to get back to home if you're just using your mouse cursor, if you need to get into settings, or if you need to search within the store, this is where you can search within the store. But we're now talking about closing apps. And see, the thing about conveyance is you actually have to use a device for a device to convey information. See, if I leave the mouse cursor right here, it's not going to convey in any information because there's no information to convey. It's not on anything. It's not touching anything. See how it's conveying that these are clickable links by highlighting that gray border around the, uh, the, the live tile? It's conveying information. When I want to go back to start, I go down to that bottom right-hand corner. It conveys information. This isn't a situation of intuitive design. It's a situation with familiar design, and Windows 8 is not familiar. So what happens when we move the mouse cursor? Oh, we're getting closer to the top of the screen. Oh, look at that. The mouse cursor has changed into a hand. Now, I wonder what we could do with a hand on a, on a window in Windows. Well, if I click it, oh, it looks like it's grabbing it. And now I can pull it down. And look, when I pull it down, I can dock it. Look how fascinating that is. I can manipulate the window, or if I want to make it, you know, the three-quarter or expand it, I can do that with that nifty little hand tool. But this is about closing apps, and wouldn't you know it, if I click and grab and move this all the way down to the bottom, you see how the, the window just sort of went semi-transparent? I just threw it away. And see, guys, that's cake. And I understand for, again, for you consumers who haven't had the experience of using Windows 8 before, you might need to be shown that. But if you're a tech journalist and you're bitching about conveyance and you can't figure out how to close an application in Windows 8, that took me literally a minute to find 
granted, I was using it on a touchscreen laptop, but you can see how even using the mouse cursor, that is not a difficult way to interact with an operating system, especially one that is designed around the idea of touch. I will say Windows 8 is way more fun to use on a touch screen. Even just doing this demonstration, I want to reach out and touch the screen. So guys, I hope that clears up any issues you might be having with closing apps in the Metro or modern UI. And uh, those of you who claim to be tech journalists and you can't figure that out, maybe you guys need to find another line of business. This is Juan, I'm using Windows 8, I like it a lot, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video.